What's going on guys, Vanax here. Welcome back to the channel. You guys really seem to have enjoyed the mission tier list. Now we finally are bringing you guys the operator tier list. So we're going to go by and start rating them basically best off what we think is the best operators being S tier and the worst operators being F tier while playing uh, critical difficulty. Now it doesn't matter if you're playing it solo or as a team. We're just going to try to go just straight to the point about the operator itself and see where we rank them. Hopefully you guys agree or don't disagree. It doesn't really matter, but just tell us what you think in the comment section down below if you enjoyed it and which operators you would like to rank and we'll see what you guys think about it all right so guys we're ranking operators today they like their other tier list i got two of my friends with me and we're gonna start ranking starting with alibi so me personally alibi i actually haven't liked and it kind of shows as i only have her as level two so i just don't really feel like the decoys that she throws out is that good because you can't stealth with it because the enemies will howl if they see them so it kind of defeats the purpose of my playstyle personally. However, I do see her being valuable when playing in Sabotage or Serial Scan because obviously you need to defend a point. Everyone's going loud already as it is, and those will kind of help you keep you safe. She is strong, and I do think that her passive, as you see down here at level 5 when you level her up, she gets reload speed, aiming speed, and weapon swapping speed. And she has a decent... Uh, weapon set here i think the uh, ac12 sounds like a blast i mean a fully auto shotgun with a round drum size of, of 30 sounds uh phenomenal to me but again based off of her gear i feel like there's a lot of other people ability wise that are better so i kind of put her i want to put her maybe in the c tier maybe the b tier because that passive does sound really nice but i'm going to put her in c for now and then maybe we'll move her around what do you guys think yeah i would put her at c i very situational uh planner more of like Oh crap, we messed up. It's time to save our bacon by throwing out some of these clones. I mean, I like her. I would, I would put her higher because when I played her, it's fun. Her freaking secondary hits like a truck. Uh, I mean, it's a pistol <laughs> shotgun. Right. And whenever I use it, just, I mean, it obliterates everything. All in all, her ability being able to distract some of the big boys, I think is pretty valuable. Dress her up to, uh, what would you say, a B, an A? Yeah, I'd put her on B. I mean, she's got some solid play. It's not the best character, but I think she's definitely useful. I mean, like a B minus C plus maybe, or maybe we'll move her around based off some other ones. So let's just move on to the okay. next one, which is Capital, my boy Capital. I like him personally because of his primary weapons. And by primaries, I mean one of his primaries. And it's this big old LMG right here, the M249. His abilities are kind of nice. I mean, he has the option, right, to fire a crossbolt, whether it be poisonous or smoke, which is cool in theory. But again, I can go in with a smoke grenade, right? Or I could just go in with smoke the operator and have a much better poison cloud to begin with. I feel like Capital, <laughs> in my opinion, is like is like D tier, maybe even F tier. Now, I have seen some people in the comments talk about him being good because of what he can do, but I just feel like he's outclassed everywhere else. I mean, to be fair, if we're putting him in D, then that means Alibi should be probably B. What do you guys think? I definitely think Alibi is better. I mean, he's got, he's got an interesting kit, but in the scope of all the other characters or operators, it just is lack luster i did a solo critical run with him actually go figure at level one and i found myself forcing myself to use the ability just to use it because i just didn't really felt like i needed to use it ever and when i did it was purely because i was out of paralysis grenades so i threw a smoke onto the ground and that was pretty much the only reason i would say d i'm happy with yep, I agree. okay next on the list we have ella Ella is one of my all-time favorite operators i want to put her up in the a tier now you could argue based off of our current argument is that her ability is the exact same thing as a paralysis grenade however her ability is recharged over time amazing arsenal every single one of these weapons are actually pretty darn good but i personally love the lmge it's one of my favorite weapons in the entire game i mean and definitely am biased she was one of my first to ever level up but i feel like she is really good i mean honestly i could pr i would probably put her in the s tier honestly i'm actually going to move her up to the s tier and save a tier for something else what do you guys think i agree um I could get behind that. All right, next we have Doc. I think Doc is a no-brainer S tier. Purely once he hits level 10, he gets five stim shots that give you temp health of 30 each one. That's a lot. But he's just, obviously, he's the healer, and he's the only healer other than kind of like Finca is, right? But Finca's on a one-minute cooldown versus Doc is just find me another ability pickup, and I'm good to go. He also has one of the best rifles in the game, the HK, which does 69 damage a shot. 
you can kill a tormentor. I've actually killed two tormentors in one magazine. That's telling you something. A lot of damage coming out just from this HK alone, which I know he's not the only operator who has it. But so but I mean, if you're comparing medic to medic, she's the other closest related medic that you can find here. Which, I mean, I would personally put... I think Doc is S tier, and I think if you if we're gonna go with the route with Finca, which actually happens to be next on the list, I do think Finca ability wise, team based, is definitely A tier. She also does have a great LMG, which I mean obviously LMGs in this game are phenomenal, but even her non LMG, like her spear through a weight, does practically the same amount of damage with a faster fire rate. Yeah, but correct me if I'm wrong, Finca her health like it goes away as soon as the uh adrenaline yeah, starts. Very over. Short. It's very short. Yep. Versus Doc is, it's always going to be there until it goes away. Yeah. So I can definitely see that. I agree. You've changed my mind. All right, we'll keep her in eight. All right, next on the list, we have Fuse. Now, personally, if it wasn't for this brand new game mode that just came out, the Kick the Ant Hill or whatever it's called, I feel like Fuse is just, is just a Rainbow Six Siege character that got thrown into the game but doesn't really have a place. His, abil his ability is phenomenal. It's it's very, very strong. But I don't think there's too many situations where you really need to fire his cluster charge on the other side of a wall, killing people, unless you're going loud and proud. You don't care about people screaming. You don't care about who's on the other side of the wall or even to the walls next to you where you can't actually fire your cluster charge. I feel like it's just, it's a cool, fun thing to do, but I just don't think he fits very well into the stealth aspect or even a lot of the aspect, There's really. There's a single objective that he does well. I think that's the question you gotta ask yourself. I mean, he's got some good weapons, and yeah, is there an objective that he does well on? I mean, let's think. The one, there, I guess there could be one decontamination, right, where you need to destroy all the green nests, the aberrant nests. That could possibly mm, be. Maybe. Yeah, I think that's the problem. It's very little practical use. Cool character, cool idea. Does lots of damage when you could actually potentially pull off the right cluster charge. But other than that, okay, so we're saying Capital is better than Fuse right now. Yeah, I mean, his ability is better than Fuse because Fuse is useless. All right, next on the list, we have Gridlock. Gridlock, I just recently maxed out. Uh, I had her probably sitting at level five or six for the longest time. She is phenomenal. Her ability, I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever played with her, but look at the size of that. That is one ability use the size of mines that it does. And as you level up, of course, it's going to be doing a ton of damage. You get to hold up to five, and when they um, get destroyed, they explode. Like, here's an example on a Smasher. Like, look at that. We're already staggering him. He's able to get assassinated just like that already off of one trip. But look how many are left, and that's only one charge. Insane. I think it's absolutely phenomenal for the Sabotage game mode as well as the Serial Scan, and then situational for the others. What do you guys think? I think I put her... Probably in the B tier with Alibi, where situational, but if you are having serial scan, almost move her up into the A tier because phenomenal for defense. And she's got great Our weapons. Of Alibi. She's very similar to Alibi. She's a similar. Alibi can pull ranged attacks and, and block those with the clones, but that ability looks quite powerful. I just unlocked her myself. That's that one where you plant the explosives. I forget what that's called. Sabotage. Sabotage. Yeah, for that objective as well. Both of those, it seems like she would just be cash money. Uh, to just lay those around the objective and easily defend it. Completely agree. Let's move on to the next one then. Hibana. I feel like Hibana is a favorite for everybody. However, as much as I love her main primary weapon, I find that the size of it actually hurts me in the long run. I feel like I reload the most with her and wish it had like an, another five to 10 more rounds. Now to be fair, if I land every single shot with it, I will kill a Tormentor, no problem. It does do a lot of damage. But let's talk about her ability, right? She's got this thing that you can fire right at a distance and then explodes it, or remote explosive things. Now, supposedly at level 10, at her max level or whatever, she can actually one-shot a Apex. Again, I still have yet to have the opportunity to test that out myself. So right now, I would put Alibi at, or Alibi, I'm sorry, Hibana, probably at A tier, because I just feel like you can't be, she's better than Alibi 100%, so they have to be A tier. What do you think? I agree. I've uh, I found uh, her to be pretty strong uh especially in certain game modes but just it's a fun character as well and she also does have that good speed and good armor as well so she just kind of plays that role that fits into the a tier i feel just off of that alone all right next up we have iq now i actually really really enjoy iq because again she's got some really good weapons her commando is one of my favorite one of the favorite weapons in the game i mean the damage output is 48 with a capacity of 30 and again it's fully automatic so me personally i don't ever rock this one i always run the commando it's has so much damage you don't really need anything else now her ability is it's actually 
I really enjoy her ability, but I feel like it's not really necessary because as long as you're having one person droning around the map, you're just naturally going to find those equipment pickups to begin with that you don't really need her. But as you level her up, she can now detect apexes and proteins, MIA, some of the objectives, and regardless if they're invisible or not, she can see them. So that's where things could get very strong. Now, the only problem I've experienced is if we are doing the mutation where they are invisible from the start, her ability does not work on those guys. And I don't know if that's by design or if that's a bug, I don't know. It's unfortunate that it does not work with it. So for that, I just feel like it's, again, very situational. I feel like she's better off probably with alibi in the b tier i'd rather have a finca on my team or a gridlock or you know etc anyone else but her but if you are playing maelstrom protocol and she happens to be available i'd say guarantee pick her up grab her every single time what do you guys think uh, yeah no no disagreements um i do feel like there's other better scanner characters depends i think that are lower than alibi i think alibi is good in a fight she's more just scouting which in this game drone is like superior scout True. so it, That's fair. I, mean, I could see. Yeah. Next up, we got Jaeger, which of course my guy is currently inactive because I was using him for the limited time mode and got myself killed. Go figure. Now Jaeger, I feel like is actually very strong again when you need to defend something. So sabotage or serial scan or even the MIA rescue. If you're playing solo, you can place down his turrets and they will actually shoot the um, like the red stuff that comes towards the tree where your guy is uh, being held captive. And it's a very strong when you level him up. Obviously, I'm only having him at level five, but I mean, it's obvious. He now has eight rounds instead of how, whatever it was once, five. And now the damage is increased to 63 and the recharge time is reduced. And the best thing about it is if the turrets don't get destroyed or don't run out of ammo, you can actually just pick them back up and use them again. Uh, Weapon-wise, he does have that commando. Oh, this is a different commando. I'm sorry, not the one that I thought it was. I think weapon-wise are okay. I think he's probably B tier. What do you guys think? Yeah, I can see him there with Alibi. So, I mean, at the end of the day, is it better than Alibi? Is it worse? I think it's about the same. I would leave um, on B. Yeah, I, I think B is fair for now. I think you're right. I think it's kind of like, is it better? Is it worse than Alibi at this point? It's kind of seeing how we're breaking off the A, B tier or C. And I think kind of like you said, it's eh, they're about the same. Next up, we have Lion. Lion, I believe was my first or second. I think Ella was my first, so probably Lion or the other way around. Regardless, one of my top three operators at all of all times. Because, again, he's got the best gun in the freaking game. The HK doing 69 damage. <laughs> Absolutely insane. But he also has a fantastic ability when playing solo or with teammates. Now, you can argue, oh, the drone will replace that. But here's the thing. It's on a cooldown, so he can continuously use it every 40 seconds. And then at max level, he scans the enemies, and they stay scanned after the ability goes away. And he can just pop it on. It's perfect for when there's a fog mutation on. It's perfect when things are going absolutely bonkers. He can just pop that thing on, and you guys can keep tabs on on everybody at all times so i think he's phenomenal i think he's very strong i think he needs to go in a tier a tier at the least if not s tier what do you guys think i i love lion <laughs> he was he's the first one that i got to 10 and i use him when i want to carry extra react tech because then i don't have to carry a drone i think he's great for solo missions uh but also as team play i think he's a solid pick Ooh, i'm gonna keep him a I'm gonna play Your the. List? I'm gonna play the. It's my list. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we'll put. We'll keep, keep him in A for now because I do think he's just a favorite. So next we got Nomad. <laughs> I, I don't even need to argue Nomad. Nomad's going into A tier. There's no doubt about it. Honestly, she could even just be right there with Ella. I mean, she's literally the same exact operator as Ella, except for she doesn't get an LMG, but her AK is phenomenal. 40 round magazine doing 44 damage. That's all you ever need in a weapon. But let's talk about why I think she belongs probably even in the S tier like Ella, because she does the same exact thing, basically. So Ella throws down a proximity mine. Well, Nomad fires an air jab mine that shoots onto the ground, which also has AOE proximity and will explode. And she gets up to six versus Ella only gets four. Now, however, hers do not recharge. So she is required to go and get the ability pickups, which could be bad when playing with other people, especially like a doc who you want to rely on his stims throughout the entire level. But if you are playing solo, I think Nomad is phenomenal playing solo because you can always just pick up the ability pickups for yourself. She's gotta be guaranteed A tier, arguably even S tier because of how similar she is to Ella. What do you guys think? Yeah, I can definitely get behind that. S tier, she's similar enough. They'll Yeah, they're very, very similar. And I feel like if we're willing to give Ella S tier, then I feel like we should also give Nomad S tier because they're practically the same. Yeah, I think very interchangeable uh, between them. If, if someone had to pick between one or the other, 
I I would just say flip a coin. Okay. I'm down for that. Now let's talk about Pulse. I think the masses say that Pulse is phenomenal, that Pulse is S tier. I know a few other people who don't even bother with Pulse. I know that I leveled up Pulse probably probably like my fifth operator leveled up because I felt like I had to because I felt like Pulse was strong. But then it just goes back to the same thing is I can just drone. Now, as he levels up level 10 here, he can actually uh, increase players movement speed on his team and his scans now detect enemies when holstered. So when he doesn't have it out, so it's like a passive scan, but it's a very small range of 10 meters. The, the drone is good because it detects, right? And that's why we use it so often. But if someone has a passive ability that can detect, like it opens up more react tech. To not bring a drone is handicapping, even if you got this guy who's half of a drone. I mean, to get three extra grenades, I would rather just have a drone, honestly. True. I would I would agree with that. I would rather have someone bring in a drone than extra grenades. Uh, no doubt about it. But say you're playing, let's just, let's maybe let's change up the argument. Let's say you're playing solo and you play pulse. I don't think you would probably need a drone anymore at that point, which then makes him a very good, valid solo uh, operator. Plus, his speed, I think, is one of the fastest in the game. Yeah. Does I that change your perspective good. versus solo versus a squad? You make a good point. You do make a good point. I still would put him maybe at B. I think the other guys are, are better. I don't know, but I think people flock to Pulse because of that ability just seems like it's so needed, so necessary, when I really don't think it is that necessary, but I do think it is strong, and information is power in this game, especially when being stealthy. He's also a cool-looking operator to begin with, so I think overall, fun factor, <laughs> I think we're going to put him into the A tier for Pulse. A tier getting stacked, man. A tier is getting stacked, but maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. Next, we got Rook. I think Rook is great for noobs. I, I like his armor plating. I mean, the armor plating is nice, but if you're really struggling with armor, I mean, you could always just grab body armor. But I guess you could argue that's the point of Rook. He can counter that and bring himself armor and his teammates armor. He does have that HK, which is a phenomenal weapon, but he also has the Vector, the V308, which is phenomenal SMG in this game. But again, I'd always recommend going HK whenever possible. I think I'm going to put Rook, though, in C tier personally. What do you guys think? Whenever I play Rook, I feel very underwhelming, honestly. Uh, armor's nice because it prevents a KO. Yep. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't feel like he brings drop much. Down. Good enough to be along there with IQ because you know if you're playing in maybe a Maelstrom protocol because you're going so long could be useful for the damage resistance, right? Because eventually you run out of pickups. All right, so it sounds like we're all in agreement for C. Now we got Sledge. Uh, I, I'm up in the air with Sledge. I f I want to love him, but I feel like he's not that great. I get arguments already in the comments before even making this video on how Sledge is really good for solo play, which I could see that because he's able to charge his hammer and he can stun tormentors and smashers, but he's not killing anybody with his ability. But you're also not asking for a damaging ability all the time, as we know that already, right? Because we put Doc in the S tier, but he doesn't have a damaging ability. And we have Pulse in A, which also doesn't damage people, same with Lion, etc. So it's not really about the damage, it's about the usefulness. And it can be useful, but you gotta remember, you have to charge up your hammer. So it's good if you're going stealth, but in the heat of the moment, having to charge up a hammer probably means you're gonna take a shot or two from the Tormentor or maybe a Spiker. I mean, you can see here, you can charge it up. If you're sneaking up on him, right? It's like, oh, this is really cool. But why would you do that when you can just stealth kill them already? And then I think that is where he does come in handy, where I think solo play is phenomenal for that reason right there alone. If you're out of gear or if you want to change the path and you're going, I feel like I have to force myself to use the hammer when I play as him. I mean, yeah, I only have him as level six. He's not max level. So obviously I haven't played him enough. But I think the reason why I don't play him enough is because I just don't feel like I need to play him. I don't. It's underwhelming a bit. Yeah, a little bit. Again, I have I, a big I, team impact. Yeah, I see the benefits. I see them. I just don't feel like they're they outweigh so many of the other operators. So, I mean, I feel like I'm going to put him B tier, maybe C tier. I feel like he's kind of in between. I, if I can get it in between, that's where I put him. I'd probably go C. <laughs> yeah, <B>. Honestly. <laughs> you say he's, D, he says C. I think B, he could be definitely useful. I think we just maybe are not using him enough or enough to his full potential, but I think his kit is there. Uh, to be B tier. But I mean, okay, here's the question. Here's how we can figure it out. Would you rather play Alibi or Jaeger than Sledge? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I would play Alibi over Sledge. You see, you'd play I, Alibi I over Sledge. Jaeger. Okay, then how about this C tier? Would you play IQ or Rook over Sledge? No, I would play Sledge over them. If that's the case, 
And I think we can all kind of agree that I feel like he's going to be B then. Because, yeah, I'd rather play Sledge than these two guys. All right, next up we got Smoke. I felt like we spent a lot of time on Sledge. So let's kind of pick things up here. We're already 53 minutes into this. Goodness gracious. I also have not spent a lot of time leveling up on him. Because I felt like, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. He's got five grenades that he can throw. The duration lasts for 10 seconds. He can kill a lot of people with them in an area. Which can be good for clearing out rooms. But I feel like... Even on critical difficulty, how congested are these rooms to merit a smoke grenade? I don't know. Does his ability merit him being B tier or C tier? What do you guys think? It's one that I I've really wanted to like, but there's just so many other people that are better than him. It's kind of just how I feel. Affected en enemies become Become scanned. scanned. So, so hearing that though, I feel like he would be really good for sabotage or serial scan because not only is he doing damage and potentially killing the weak ones and hurting the bigger en type enemies he's also marking them scanning us for us which can be very useful i don't know i would I put him maybe like c tier, c -tier. i think we need more experience with him to necessarily decide better or worse yeah so arguably our bias to not using him as much puts him into c tier we could argue that he could be b tier we're not saying he's not but at the moment based of our yes, experience we're saying c he does look really cool. He does he look does cool. Look let's, cool. Look, let's look at some of his <laughs> other stuff here. He does have the Archean smoke, and there's the diamond class because we got the Maelstrom. Yeah, I mean, he does have some cool skins. So everyone's listening. We want him, like, right here somewhere in between, but we're going to put him in C. We got two more operators left. We got Lord Tachanka, which I have not leveled up, and I don't know if I ever will. No, I probably will just to finish leveling up all the operators. I think it's cool that he gets a turret. I don't think it's really that big of a deal. It could be nice for the serial scan and sabotage, but other than that, I just don't I just don't think it really matters. I mean, maybe if you want to stand off against an Apex, just freaking plop your turret down, sit there, and just tank him, I guess. I've never done it, so I don't know how viable that really is. He is a freaking big, beefy boy, though. Look at that. Look at the headpiece alone. A freaking walking tank. I think he's just a meme, just like he was in Siege. I don't know how often he's actually played anymore because they don't even have the turrets. I don't even know what he does in Siege at this point. I think, honestly, we put him so next to Capitao or we put him in S tier because he's the meme lord and we're funny like that. Better than Fuse because he could put his turret anywhere, but not better than Smoke because Smoke at least can throw it. And I don't know. I just, I don't know. Tashanka D. Only part I can see him being useful again is where we're defending right and he can spin 360 which is why i think he definitely deserves to be above fuse in the f tier but i don't think he needs to be any really higher than that i mean out of the three of us which i know isn't the whole player base we've never played him right yeah so to be fair we probably shouldn't even really be ranking him at this point it's pure opinion we have no experience whatsoever so I think that's why we're putting him in the D tier, but arguably people in the comments can say where they think he should go. And I'm fine with that. All right, last one is Vigil, clearly an S tier. I don't even think we need to argue about that. I think Vigil is kind of secretly everyone's favorite, maybe not even secretly. I think everyone likes Vigil for the fact that he can freaking go invisible and also make his teammates go invisible, which is perfect for stealth, which is exactly what this game is. is. So going invisible is awesome. He's got great weapons. Um, so again, I think Vigil, um, I mean, we look at what he can do, right? He goes invisible for himself. He can make his teammates go invisible. He can also make teammates and himself move faster. He's also a very fast moving. He's got five speed, just like Pulse, very fast. He's stealthy. He's got great weapons. I think he belongs at S tier. Agreed. 100%. No complaints here. All right. And we are one hour <laughs> into recording this. Goodness gracious. Holy cow. I'm going to have to figure out how to condense this down. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys. Let me know in the comments section down below if you approve or disapprove of this list. Of course, we're a little biased off of what we do and don't like and which operators we have and haven't upgraded. Like, obviously, Tachanka, all of us have never played it. And I haven't played much of Alibi, but my friends had, which is why we kind of moved her into the B tier. And I know for Siege... Uh, normal Rainbow Six Siege, she's obviously probably a much higher candidate for, for extraction. I think we are pretty confident in our decisions here for this tier list. Let us know in the comment section down below if you enjoyed the video, if you agree or disagree, and where you would put some of these operators. And we'll see you the next one. Peace.